G'day, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video um, as a, a bit of a follow-up, um, but a, a bit of a, I suppose, an advanced session of shooting with a tactical bipod. Um, I have one of my own systems in front of me. Um, it's really a, a good uh, for demonstration purposes down the track, but let me go through some basics of where I'm coming, I'm coming from to start off with. Um, and that is um, shooting with a bipod. I've, the, one of the main videos that has got a lot of views and, and has seemed to have helped lots of people, and that is working out how to preload their bipod or get something in front of their, so their bipod feet have got some grip so they can preload their bipod or push their shoulder forward and preload their bipod a little bit. Um, and this was really to counteract or to try and help with people that are shooting trying to ignore the front of the rifle so much it just sits on the bipod and then just shoot it and the rifles bounce and buck and do all sorts of weird things around that sort of stuff or skip across the ground um, and in some cases they'll work okay but in most cases they people are having problems with that sort of stuff where they don't get consistent groups or not very consistent shooting and by putting a bit of preload push using your collarbone using your shoulder and pushing the rifle forward a little bit a little bit of preload on settles the rifle down and they get some good improvements from there and a lot of places that's talking about when you're shooting from benches and there's no grip or anything to actually have a, a G clamp or a piece of wood to push up against can actually help and create that but it also creates another problem and this is going to happen for people who've either started to do that work well and then find it doesn't work so well or when you go into pushing further for more precision um, that it can it can be problematic now i suppose i'll come back to the basics and other videos i've done which go through this is the basics and the logic of preloading a bipod and actually the logic of using a tactical bipod um, in the best way you can for precision shooting and that's um, I should also I suppose qualify that quickly um, the precision shooting I'm talking about is trying to get quarter MOA groups I use it for ELR shooting where I need extreme precision to be able to um, shoot what, what, what I suppose how much what am I trying to say here when you're trying to shoot ELR so you're shooting in the one mile sort of where it starts but in the one and a half miles or two miles or um, 2,000 meters or 3,000 meters or two and a half thousand and, and into those distances um, your biggest enemy the biggest thing you're always going to fight is the conditions um, so to deal with conditions that are going to put another MOA or more onto your shot um, and you have to try and read between the lines and work them out. You want to know that your platform, your, your form, your platform, your abilities are all running in the quarter MOA accuracy to, to end up with a one and a half or two MOA group at one and a half miles. You need to be doing things really well to be using more than just luck to get onto target. Um, so fine level precision. Um, I'm sort of counteracting a little bit the likes of the Precision Rifle Series and that sort of stuff, which still are very accurate rifles, are very accurate shooters, but you're not quite, you're a bit higher levels than the hunting sort of accuracy needed, but still the one MOA sort of work, it's more about fast acquisition. And then you can use bipods and platform things a little bit more um, flexibly because you're not trying to get that quarter MOA accuracy everywhere. But just keep in mind, the word precision gets used a little um, all over the place. I'm a, I'm, that's what I'm talking about, quarter MOA, getting the best accuracy I can. So with that in mind, the feature of using a tactical bipod means that I want the cycle of the rifle, that when it goes bang back against your shoulder, to be as flat as possible. I don't want it to be going up, down, left, right, um, bouncing, juddering, anything. I want this as smooth action as possible. Um, so to enable that, I use um, the length of the leg and this little bit of rock that you can see it. That bit of rock there is a very valuable thing to me. What's actually doing is using the length of, of the, the bipod leg and actually you'll notice um, this, uh, the arc at the top of the, uh, of this, this, this segment that's going to be here. So this, this arc that is the complete arc of that leg moving, there's obviously, if you go from this point to this point, there's an elevation change. 
you would find if I set that up you on the on the muzzle you would find the the the, the muzzle would be going up and down when it goes through this point the same here less so when you get to the top of it there's almost no movement in the in the barrel or in the rifle angle and you'll notice here I can do that I can demonstrate that there's straight forward and back where there's almost no movement now I say almost no movement people a lot of people go to the fact that you want it dead dead straight it needs to be dead dead straight well yes there can be a little bit of advantage on that point we actually don't care about the movement we care about the consistency of the movement in truth, if it was a whole two inches or a whole, what's that, six inches through the process, but it was precisely the same at exactly the same timing every time, then the bullet's going to come out to exactly the same place. The bigger issue with the larger movement is that the consistency needs to be so much more accurate because there is so much more movement. When you have this, which probably if I set up a dial gauge on there, because there is a little bit of segment here, I would have a few thou of movement. But you'll notice that it is, what that means is that it's very easy to be very consistent with that movement because there's such a, such a broad arc. Okay, so hope that didn't get too confusing there, but consistency is what we're about. Now this moves into another place where people use F-class bipods and things like that, so they have a, a pad set up, a, a board set up, they have a big, broad, strong, rigid bipod with skids on the bottom of it, which means it slides straight back. And that is the same nature, the same thing going on there, keeping things dead flat in that travel. So there is a real logic to that process. There's some things that I think I'm bringing to the precision world with the, using a tactical bipod correctly that are better than that, but can't prove that. I'll get to that later on what I'm talking about, but that's what that flat section is about. So this discussion I'm talking about is using a tactical bipod, why use a tactical bipod, um, and how to use it as well as I can do. So we've got to the point of this, this flat arc, uh, keeping as flat as possible. To create that, I do, I want as long a legs as possible because the longer the leg, if you've got a short arc and you've got this rock here, there's more elevation change for less forward and back movement. If you've got a really long arc, then for that same amount of forward and back movement, there's almost no change. So the longer the leg, the easier that happens. And yes, I, I've mentioned it, I do want that forward and back travel. Um, and that's because if the legs are stiff, then they don't let anything move. So then they are more inclined to skip um, rather than have that little bit of rock. Oh, I should have said that at the beginning, but that little bit of movement is very important to me. So I suppose a little quick segue into that is the design of my system. The legs are nice and high. Um, they have a nice little bit of rock about them. There's other features, but I'm not trying to say you one of my bipods at the moment. I want to try and explain what I'm doing here. So that's, that's the logic to go with the using a bipod. Now, the main reason, I've got some more to get to, but I'll get to now the main reason for this video, is that one of the problems that can happen if you end up with a very good like you clamp a board on the front here and push against it or using spikes another good thing to do where you're dug into the ground nicely which I like and I'll get to in a little bit as well but they're dug into the ground heavily um, one of the negatives that can create with that is you can put too much preload on there now, there's a couple of things happen to go with that the logic of why it happens is it's actually quite a learned and practiced um, and you have to do a lot of work to get your preload right. Um, there's another, so, so it's hard to get perfect and hard to be completely consistent. So it is something you've got to learn. But there's another feature going on and that is that for a lot of shooters, well, a little bit of preload did a good thing, so more has got to be better, doesn't it? Well, no, it doesn't at all. And there's two fundamentals going on with that. Once, one thing is once you start to push too hard, you start talking things in your rifle. Once you've got your rifle talked, it's like your body. If you've got a muscle tension in the wrong place, if you've got things that are talked at the wrong place, that when it goes bang, it's going to behave differently. So too much tension preload can be a negative on that front. But the big thing we're talking about with too much preload is this angle. Is this, we want this little arc here. We want this flat as possible. Once you've taken something straight, you go forward a little bit, it goes bang, um, that's nice, or the other way around. Uh, but essentially, that's just a little bit of travel in the arc. 
once you bend it right over, so you're then bending against things, when it goes bang, well, it's going to lift the muzzle. And once again, we're back to where this consistency thing is an issue. The more movement that's going on, the, the less recoil it needs to make movement. So if you have a slightly different setup, then you're going to find elevation changes. So really keeping this flat as possible. And I'll quickly segue into how to get that as good as possible. The, the best way to do it, um, and you'll see me do it on many videos, you'll see me do it when I start the shot, sometimes during the shot, but something that I'm doing quite consistently is I'm making sure that this is traveling sometimes between shots, but certainly to start off with, but I actually am rocking it backwards and forwards a little bit. I'm watching my eye picture to make sure that I haven't got movement as I'm doing that, as it's going on the target properly. There can be a little bit, which I'll get to that in a minute. But largely, I'm, I'm feeling where that is. There's a little bit of preload. It'll actually, it doesn't quite do it without your hand there, but you can actually feel where center is. So you know that, you know, back here is fired, forward there is, is where you're trying to go to, um, so that when it bangs through, it's nice and straight. So that's the movement I'm feeling. Now, I've been doing it for lots of years. It's a learned practice for myself. One of the advantages I get, which I would suggest to anyone who's trying to refine things, but that is, I video myself all the time. Clearly, you see me on TV all the time. Well, you see me on the, on the computer all the time. Well, I get to see me too. So I'm learning from that as well. And I would suggest that's a good idea for any particular rifle to actually watch yourself shooting it, see where you're preloading through, set a camera up at 90 degrees, and watch and see what you're doing with your bipod. Okay. That will help learn things. I'm, to be truthful, the uh, little piece I'd go there, I'm for going for the nth levels of precision. I'm looking at building myself a little, a little gauge so I can actually see exactly where I'm going to um, for the really intense situations and for the really, really trying to refine myself, whether it's a learning tool or it's just a precision tool, I don't know, but it's something I'm looking at designing um, and testing and see if it does any good. But that is to get that um, position to exactly the same place with every shot so maybe there's a tiny bit of accuracy in doing that as well and I have done some testing to see that you know I felt when I prayed a little bit harder seen an elevation change um, but we're talking you know two, two plus miles there's other things going on so it can be a little complicated anyway let's get into the other bits and pieces of where I think there's some advantages with doing this thing properly um, and that is um, the, the concept of what I'm trying to do, which is a little bit different to uh, the folks who would say, well, if you want the real precision, why don't you go with the real precision target F-class system? So we're going to skids, a, a, a prep pad um, with the proper traction um, um, surface on it with your skids, nice, big, rigid, strong bipod, all the rest of it um, for the accuracy, accuracy side of things. Um, and listen, they have a very sound logic to go with that. I suppose my core concept has always been to use a rifle in a, let's say, tactical, let's say semi-tactical form. Uh, the the lay down in the dirt and be able to do it is always been the fundamentals of what I'm trying to do. I don't want to build a Formula One car. I want to keep it as a street car that can do this. So that's a little with some of the levels of the rifles go to. You could say, okay, that's being a little inane. That doesn't really make any sense. Um, and I do prep the ground to a degree. There's some of the big shots where I kick out the dirt and get it to where my body angle isn't screwed up to the wrong place. But I'm always fundamentally, and sometimes I put down a tarp because of dry, dusty conditions. And even with my good muzzle brakes, I, there's crap going everywhere. So um, the, uh, the, some of those situations, yes, I do prep it, but it is just a, it is the type of thing I can do with the side of my boot in any situation. It is still in a tactical format. I'm bugging it out so I'm not hurting my back or screwing myself up in a hard place for high, for shit so shots like that. But it is not a prep target area by any means. Um, so I'm still using the tactical side of things, but there's actually another ingredient in my logic. And that is, I believe, um, well, yeah, I believe got a, I've got a little advantage there. Can't prove it uh, for two reasons. One, um, it's with, I'm talking about harmonics and absorbing the shock of the barrel. Um, 
And there's two reasons. I, uh, there's, there's, I, it's more a feeling, and I've certainly seen some really astounding results out of the stuff I've done. So I'm very confident that it works to a certain level, but I've never done the F-class shooting. So I can't go and say, okay, if I set up an F-class thing in the same sort of thing, would I be better than that? Would it be better with the F-class? I don't know. I haven't done the testing, and at this point, I'm not planning on it. But what my logic is, is that right amounts of preload in the right place on the rifle attaches me, a big squishy human, um, via my collarbone, but attaches me to the rifle. So on the instant of going bang, right as it's going bang, even as that, de as that ignition for the cartridge is starting, is that I'm attached to the rifle to level I'm absorbing some of that, boom, that, that um, not percussion, the actual shock waves, which create harmonic shock waves that go right through the rifle i'm attaching it to it and that is the best form of the absor absorption i can think now obviously good strong chassis to transfer it that don't flex but transfer the shock the bedding process all those things are very very important but i'm attaching to the back of it now you'd say with the likes of an f class or with it when they're shooting in a no preload form or almost no preload they have a little bit of traction and very heavy rifles so there's a little bit there um, but I'm attaching um, a, little, a little bit more, I think, in the way of what I'm trying to do. As I said, I haven't used their system, so I can't really say more or less, but that's my logic there. But the, fun, the other fundamental my logic is that by having the bipod feet grounded, is they are actually dug in. These ones are just on little rubber things that dig into the dirt. On my bigger rifles, I'll, I have um, skid plaids with with um, spikes on them. So they're actually ground, they're actually attaching to the dirt. Um, and the other, what I'm actually, the logic in my head is the preload is going through the rifle down to the bipod feet. Um, so that, that boof of ignition and of the, the harmonics is trying to be absorbed by everything there. Now, as to how well it works in any real sense, in any comparison, like I said, I've got limited tests. Uh, well, I haven't done any testing in the F-class format, but versus having a bipod that's misbehaving, that's not grounded um, by me not preloading properly, that all does make negative things to it. So like I said, th there's, a, there's a couple of logics to the tactical bipod format that I'm using. Um, I definitely want to set up my bipods to work well, um, where I, the, the long legs, um, I have the advantage in the long leg thing of being able to tuck it away, it cleans everything, it gets everything out of the road. Um, the way they rotate and grip and all that sort of stuff is really good. But the fundamentals are the legs are as long as they can be for this format. Um, you'll notice on my, one of my other rifles, I designed the sliding bipod system um, for rigid leg bipod, um, which I still set up with grip on the bipods and got a bit of preload out of it. Um, I found when I went to, they were rigid legs, they had no flex in them. When I changed over to a different bipod and got a little bit of flex, I found a little bit more consistency. That process is still happening, but what I'm actually saying is even with something with huge recoil, where I'm using a sliding bipod option, this preload system is still something that I feel has some merit. So, um, I suppose I would finish that stuff off by saying, um, this is my concept, this is what I'm doing, um, this is something that's working for me. Um, if you've got free form shooting or where it's just on bags and you just shoot with very little pressure and it works fine and you shoot your quarter MA groups, I, you know, th th that works. Leave it alone. I'm not trying to correct that. I'm not trying to change that. I'm not trying to do that whatsoever. Um, F class shooting and, and using that sort of stuff, it works and it works well and the groups work really well. I'm, I'm not here to say that's not the best way to do things. What I am here to say is this is what I'm doing. This is the logic to what I'm doing and this is how I'm actually doing it. Um, and really, this video is about where I talk about preloading a bipod, and I've actually seen shooters that start that are having problems, and they were shooting okay, and they're running having problems. What's going on? What's the inconsistency? And I have a look at them, and they're overloading their bipods. Um, whether that's uh, some straps on their on their on their shooting mat, or that's a or a, a bit of plywood g-clamp down to the front of the table or whatever it is what started as a good idea turned into too much preload and then actually causing 
problems because of and like I said it comes into rifles flexing it comes into inconsistent amounts of too much preload so it's changing different things um, but it's really the preload is about the right amount it's only a small amount it's only enough to you know get to that forward arc when it goes bang it comes back straight so it's yeah that's what it's about and I suppose there's one other bit I would say I think I mentioned halfway through then I come back to is one of the things you can help to get this right um, is if you're getting, uh, you can see when you've, you're dialed in perfectly you, and you need a very stable platform to do this. So I use my bag base down the rear. But if everything is not moving to where it shoots and it should be back on target and it's solid, you know, everything works really nice like that, you can actually use your reticle to help you tell you how much your preload is. As said, it means that your feet aren't moving. They're, they're grounded properly. They're not wriggling around during the shot. The bag's not moving. It's settled. It's doing everything. But once you get to that place, um, you can actually see that as you preload on, it's right. You push a little bit further. It comes down. Okay, it's you're pushing too far. You come back to where it's right on the target, pull the trigger there, and you can find some consistency out of using your reticle. Um, and that can actually tell you how much you're preloading for. It's something I sometimes do. But the, the, the thing to understand there is that nothing's moving. If you're using your reticle to make your preload right and your rifle's moving a little bit, well, it's, it's a fallacy. You're not going to find consistency out of that. Well, that's about what I can tell you on tactical bipod shooting or our style of tactical bipod shooting. And listen, I hope that's some help some people. There's, that, that's something that there may be a little bit, maybe a lot in for you. Um, but like I said, hope that's some help. Um, keep in mind, we bring this stuff to you out of what we can afford out of our pocket and out of hey, you guys helping us. So for those that um, can help us, um, both in whether like, subscribe, like if you like the video, then and subscribe to the video, share the video, help grow the channel, that side of things. Um, if you can make any donations, um, or help us in the way of keeping the channel going with some funds to help pay for all the stuff we do here uh, it would be awesome. You can do that. We've got a down in a, the 4AW icon. You can click on that. That takes you to our channel page. In the banner, you'll see there's a PayPal link. Um, you can make monthly donations or just a one-off donation there. Um, that PayPal, by the way, that uses your, you can use credit card. You can use other ways of doing that. So anyone can use that side of things. Um, and then there's also over on our web store where we have support bits, help us that way. There's also a range of products that we do there from our bipod systems to our bag based systems to all sorts of stuff. We've sort of designed, I gradually designed bits and pieces to help with my shooting and it's stuff I now build to be able to sell all over the world. So um, if you want any of those or can help us any way whatsoever, then awesome. And other than that, thank you very much for checking in on us and we'll um, catch you next time.